close to it. Good afternoon. The Design Review Board Number 1 public meeting of April 30th, 2009 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or, or put on silent all features and phones. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on any specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his discretion. Roll call. Board member Aliano? Here. Board member Ellis? Present. Board member Insua? Not here. Board member Art Simonian? It will not be present this evening. And chairperson Yu? Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on April 23, 2000. Oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Do you have any oral communication cards? I have no cards. There are no cards. Which brings us directly to the review calendar. And should we make it? Would you like to make the announcement or would you like me to make the announcement? Uh, regarding the consent item. <laughs> well, we have three people here, but one member will have to excuse himself because he is within the radius of the Virginia Avenue project. So we'll have to move that one down to uh, a time when we get a third or a fourth member uh, here. So um, we'll start with uh, the first project, um, which is item B on DRB. Uh, one dash PDR two thousand nine zero zero seven A nineteen twenty Melwood Drive and uh, ready to go. Yes. Uh, good evening, good evening, Mr. Chair, member of the boards. Uh, the next case before you is uh, one dash PDR two thousand nine double oh seven. Dash A, located at 1920 Melwood Drive. Uh, the zone for this property is R1R, uh, Restricted Residential Zone, Floria District 2. This project is, is exempt from CEQA. Uh, this is the first time submittal for the board's review. Uh, the project description is to construct a 1,422 square foot ground floor addition, a new 19 square foot fl uh, front entry, uh, to expand 196 square feet to an existing attached garage, uh, which is 452 square feet, uh, to make a three car garage as required by the zoning code. Uh, this project also includes a facade change to remodel the existing Spanish colonial uh, single family residence with an updated contemporary style. Uh, the, exist the existing property is approximately 12,621 square feet and is currently developed with a one-story single-family residence with an attached 452-square-foot two-car garage built in 1941. Uh, the topography of the property is relatively flat. However, at the rear yard, it noticeably, float, uh, noticeably, noticeably uh, slopes downward 10 feet from the southwest interior property line. <clears throat> uh, there are three existing mature sycamore trees at the front along Millwood Drive, and there's one uh, oak tree at the rear. Uh, on to site planning, the design guidelines <coughs> encourage new homes and renovations to reflect the existing site plan patterns that will match those of the surrounding neighborhood. Um, the garage expansion will reduce the setback to 15 feet. Uh, the existing building has an interior setback of 4 feet 10 inches at its closest distance from all interior property lines, and the site planning of the project largely reflects the existing site planning configuration and is consistent with the design guidelines. 
uh, onto mass and scale. Uh, the size of the house will exceed the average square foot of the neighborhood. However, the building doesn't does not exceed, I mean, does not appear excessively massive as the house will remain one story and uh, the majority of the addition will occur at the rear of the house. Um, the articulation of the front helps break down the massing as viewed from the street and the fenestration patterns that are incorporated into the design. Uh, the mass and scale of the project appears to relate well with the surrounding neighborhood, which includes a number one story homes similar in mass and scale. Uh, Overall, the pro project uh, has incorporated design elements that are prevalent within the immediate neighborhood uh, and is well, uh, well designed with a contemporary style. Uh, as a consideration, the quality of the siding material could be improved. Uh, staff's recommendation is approval with the consideration. Uh, consideration uh, number one is as an alternative to cultured stone siding, staff recommends uh, for consideration for, uh, for the utiliz utilization of natural stone veneer. Uh, this concludes uh, my presentation. The applicant and the homeowner are in the audience, and I'll be available for questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for staff? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. I have one card for the project. Um, <coughs> Mr. Hamlet, Mr. Abians, if you could come up, please. And, of course, you know, <laughs> please just state your name and address yes. the record. Sure. Uh, Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, my name is Hamlet Zorabians. I'm the project architect. My address is 3467 Ocean View Boulevard, Suite B, uh, Glendale. Um, as a part of the presentation, I'd like to uh, also give this to you. It's a, sure. It's the board. It's the same perspective that you received in your packets, but uh, basically it's on the board, so we'll be able to actually relate to the project better. Um, anyway, the existing um, the pr proposed project is a, a single-story addition to a single-family and single-story house. Um, from the very beginning, um, the discussions that I had with uh, uh, the, my client and the owner of the property, it was decided to um, make this addition one story and not go uh, to a second-story addition uh, to be more consistent with the adjacent properties and the existing. Uh, 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 structures there. Uh, and um, uh, virtually what we're doing here, we're going to be remodeling the entire house, um, keeping 50% uh, of the exterior walls, combined exterior walls, and the roof. Um, but the, most of the addition, major addition, will happen in the rear of the property rather than the front. The front addition will be in uh, uh, one segment to the south side where we have the existing garage. Uh, and by, according to the ordinance, we need to uh, change our second, uh, I mean, two two-story garage into a three-story garage. We have to make that accommodation. So we've done that. And uh, virtually, we worked with the existing structure as much as possible. And, uh, and uh, the, the way, uh, in, let me also talk about the circulation, because this is a very unique lot in a sense that it's one of the lots at the end of a dead end, as you can see. And therefore, there is an existing semicircle uh, driveway, which we're going to be maintaining that, uh, recognizing that there is a need for the cars to turn around and to not to... Um, you know, create any um, mishaps there. Uh, but uh, another unique feature of the site is that towards the east side of the property, there is a um, huge uh, lot over there which is practically not buildable. So there, there isn't any existing structure at that uh, at this time, and we don't know if there's, there will be any other structure built there or not. But nevertheless. Uh, we have that uh, issue there that we don't have any structures behind us and keeping the sing single story configuration as it is existing right now <coughs> completely eliminates the issue of the, uh, you know, obscuring any views and so on and so forth. Now, the way we've designed it, uh, uh, we are changing the style of the house to more of a con modern contemporary version. Uh, we have uh, relocated the, the small entry that there was there already into the center and into the middle, creating a great room right in the middle with, with a clear glass and clear story windows on top. Uh, there is a sloped feature roof right in the middle above the uh, great room, um, uh, which is going to be unique. We are thinking of having blue lamp beam in, inside in a certain angle, and we have talked about how we're going to finish that, and so on and so forth. So th there's a feature there to make the uh, structure more, more transparent. 
as you're entering the building, you, know, you have a nice entry there, with, with, which will have a um, frosted glass door. Then you have, uh, uh, you know, side uh, side lights and glass um, wall virtually. And on each side of the entry, we'll, we're going to have a very shallow uh, pond for the entry. Um, and uh, and besides that, is a very simple design. The materials that we're incorporating here and we're proposing to have would be mainly a, a smooth finished plaster. Uh, and the roofs are obviously uh, are, are restyled and redesigned to have a combination of flat roofs and slope roofs. Uh, part of the roof would be uh, metal, a standing sea metal roof. Uh, and all the windows are going to be all replaced. The, all brand new windows are going to be there, which obviously will be dual glazed, uh, energy efficient um, aluminum uh, uh, windows. Um, as far as the landscaping is concerned, uh, right in the front of the project, there are three sycamore trees, which we're not removing. They're going to be uh, existing trees are going to remain. And any other mature trees that we can identify, uh, it's going to remain. There, there will be perhaps, you know, groomed and everything, but it's, it's, are we going to keep the existing trees? There is an existing tree, an oak tree, in the rear of the property, uh, which uh, has been uh, addressed in a sense. We received some comments about that, which we need to uh, uh, kind of make sure that we're not going to have any uh, landscaping as far as um, underneath the, the drip line. We're not going to have any pipes there. We're not going to have any construction basically virtually uh, below the drip line. Um, and then um, uh, new landscaping is designed. We have submitted the landscape plan, which was done by a landscape architect. And that landscaping basically echoes and mimics whatever the new style and uh, it's in accordance to the modern style there is. You know, incorporates some certain materials uh, such as gravel and uh, boulders and certain things, some berming and everything. It's very simple landscaping there. Um, so that's basically it, and, and, and I'll be uh, here for any questions. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions for him? Uh, how do you feel about um, the suggestion by staff about the culture stone versus the... Is that something that you're open to? to uh, we are open. I think if, if you can, uh, it's just the issue will be the cost uh, issue, which I know most of the time it's not an issue. But, but I think what we will do, uh, I will talk to uh, my client and then see if we can, uh, in this, uh, you know, we can pay, perhaps replace it and this you know, conjure it perhaps. Okay. Do you, do you have, I mean, would you, I mean, the, well, I'm happy to make it a suggestion or a recommendation, but mm -hmm. how do you feel if we made it a requirement? Well, if that's if if that's predominantly I don't your, know how the board feels. Take, I'm just thinking. I'm okay with it. We're not going to be arguing with that. All right. Great. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I got a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> Thank you for mentioning the three trees, because when I did look at your rendering, I said, where did the three trees go? But oh, yeah. obviously you did it for yeah. clarity. Um, there is a, let's see, I had two questions. There's a, an existing wall along the, I would guess it's the north, so the south side of the property, mm -hmm. adjacent. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed the mention was made that the one on the opposite side is on the other property. Mm -hmm. Is that wall... Is, it's the other property as well. Because it certainly needs some work. You, you, I'm sure that at some point, uh, okay. But it's not on your line. No. Okay. No. That was the whole issue. We Actually, I went there. That was I was questioned about that. And I went there and I actually looked at it and we determined that it's not in our property. If this is in our property, we could have actually addressed that issue and improved it. I'm sure at some point you will address that. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned about the second story. Um, someplace in the back of my mind, I remember a contentious design review board uh, meetings about a property that was at the end of the street here. And as at that time, I thought the CCNRs and those houses were all set to one story. Is that something that you're aware of at all? I'm not aware of it, okay. unfortunately. Um, okay. I think uh, we talked the wall. The trees. Oh, the, the, the ponds. Mm -hmm. That was the other note. Fish pond or just a, a reflecting? No, it's just a reflective okay. pond. We're going to have some lighting in it. Gotcha. And, uh, okay. yeah, it's just a modern kind of very shallow pond. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Good. Thank, thank you. you. I have no other cards for this project. Is there anyone else that's in the audience that's here to speak on 
in this project? No? Okay. Then we'll close the session and we'll discuss. Um, Juliana, would you like to get us started on this project? Sure. Thank you. Um, I um, just want to say thank you for such a nice project. I think um, I don't really have a, a lot to say except to congratulate the architect for a nice job. I don't see any reason to scrutinize anything that's been done here. I think it's been done very well, uh, and it's going to be a wonderful Wonderful project. Uh, I like the modern look of it. I like I like all the, the price compositions and, and the different elevations. The material selection is very good. Um, so that's why I asked you earlier if, if we could sort of bring that up uh, just a degree higher and just go with the natural. I think uh, the house will age better, and the natural stone will will react better to to, to just the elements. So I would strongly encourage to persuade the, the owner to go in that direction. Um, don't have any concerns about colors or uh, other other aspects of the house. I think uh, the, the landscaping, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a landscape architect, so I can't make a judgment on on the various pieces, but it's, it, it seems pretty modest, I, uh, especially given the area is fairly green. Um, I think this is probably appropriate. I would just encourage using as much zero scape as, as possible in the type of landscape so that it uh, uh, would be a more environmentally correct approach. Uh, but other than that, I, I, I will support the project. Thank you. Um, I, I do enjoy the design. I am sorry to see a loss of a Spanish-style house in Glendale, especially in that street, but the house that's there definitely needs to be dealt with, and, uh, and I think you couldn't come up with a nicer design. I would echo Mr. Aliano's concern about the stone. I think, if anything, that was the one thing that I wasn't too crazy about, but I, would, uh, I think you've done a nice job, and it will be definitely a, an improvement in the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, I, too, want to commend the architect and, and the work that you've done. Um, I do like sort of the way you're playing around with the with the different materials and sort of the you know framing views and framing uh, the, the stone areas and the way that windows are punched into them and they kind of playfully are moving a little bit on on that on that plane. So uh, I, I do like that. Um, I'm not too sure about the white. It's a little stark. <laughs> it's, it could be kind of glaring. I know it's as an as architect we, we like that sort of pure white. <laughs> sort of the I guess the Richard Meyer boy I guess on there, but. Um, I, I, I think that you have a good handle on the project, and so I, I think I could leave that up to you to, to decide if that's what you want to go with. Um, uh, on the issue of the stone, um, I'll sort of go the same route and say that I, I think I could leave that up to you. I, I, would, I don't need any, one way or another on which where we go on that. So um, I think if we can get a motion on this project, we can... Okay, well, then what I'll do is, because um, I, I, I want to make sure that we, we're getting, um, you know, the product that um, you intend, uh, and also make it easier to sort of, in the end, to be able to know that we're getting exactly that. That's why I'm mm -hmm. suggesting we can require the natural stone that we know exactly what we're getting. Since the architect has no strong objection to that, I think it would be worth doing that. So I'd like to move to approve the project with the requirement to provide natural stone in lieu of um, culture stone. And uh, natural stone veneer is yes. yeah, also well acceptable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank Same you. style. I mean, I love the style that you picked to cut. It's beautiful. If you can find something in a natural, it would be nice. I'll second the motion. Um, can I make a clarification on uh, a comment? Uh, Board Member Eliano had uh, to uh, encourage zero escape. Would that just be a consideration? That's a consideration, yes. I'll amend the second, too. Yeah, or just planting that requires minimal water, which is what the zero escape is. So. Okay, I have a motion by, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, Eliano. Board, board, member, board member Aliano and a second by uh, board member Ellis uh, to approve the uh, project with with the uh, alteration to the consideration to be a uh, a condition to have uh, sto uh, with the utilization of stone veneer and also a consideration of 
uh, implementing xeriscaping with the landscape. Natural stone. Yes. Natural. I'm sorry. Oops. Natural stone. My, my apologies. <clears throat> yes. Um, this will be roll call. Uh, board member Eliano. Yes. Uh, board member Ellis. Yes. Uh, Chairperson Yu. Yes. Okay. We have a three uh, zero vote with two board members absent. Thank you. So we'll go to the next. Project, thank you. Uh, 1-PDR 2009-013-A-3620 St. Elizabeth Road. <laughs> Which one? Linda Vista? That would be St. Elizabeth. Oh, I'm sorry, St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth. Ah, here she is. Okay, Mr. Chair, members of the Design Review Board, the next case item before you is case number 1-PDR-2009-013-A, located at 3620 St. Elizabeth Road. The applicant is Burt Notch. This project is located in the R1R Floor Area Ratio District 3 zone. This project is exempt from CEQA. The project proposes a one-story addition along the front north elevation with facade modifications to a single-family house. The 452-square-foot addition will accommodate a new entry and family room. The new addition will also create a small forecourt that will be visible from the street. There, are currently a two, there is currently a two-car attached garage that has direct access from St. Elizabeth Road. The project also proposes that the existing front yard landscaping will be modified. Two decorative retaining walls will be constructed along St. Elizabeth Road, as reflected in the site plan, uh, to enhance the front yard landscaping. Minimal grading is required for the construction of these two retaining walls. The new retaining walls will incorporate flower beds consisting of draught tolerant shrubs and an evergreen multi-trunk ash tree. Overall, the mass of the addition, garage, and proposed landscaping appear to be an improvement to the existing condition and is consistent with the existing architecture. The location of the addition appears to be appropriate and compatible with the neighborhood. Staff recommends approval with two conditions. The first condition being that aluminum, win window, oh, excuse me, aluminum wood clad recessed windows shall be used to complement the new architecture and that the second condition be that the proposed front door should be simplified to better harmonize with the new proposal. A detail of that front door is located on the plans directly behind you. I believe there are two custom doors that are being proposed for this. Staff is recommending that they both um, be redesigned to be a simpler design. You mean detail F? That's correct, yes. Um, I do have neighborhood photos and a material board to hand. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Do we have Thank any you. questions for staff? Um, I don't think. Oh, I, I actually have the, the front setbacks. In, on the area, I, my question was the bay, the bay window, which the minimum front setback is 15 feet, and, uh, and it's at and I believe it's already 20. at 20. It's 20. Okay, yes. great. All right, thank you. Any other questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, let's go to the cards. We have three cards for this project. The first one, uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. Bert Notch. If you just state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Bert Notch, and uh, I'm from uh, Top Notch Studios at uh, 1440 Flower Street in Glendale. Um, the addition that uh, we're proposing here uh, is uh, staged in a way that the uh, feature of the addition matches the garage. As you notice, the garage is, is dropped down from the existing uh, fascia of the roof, and uh, so we drop that down so it lines up and it has a better curb appeal. Uh, <clears throat> we've added a bow window to the front of the house. It's a Pella uh, clad window, <clears throat> wood clad window, um, to get to enhance the uh, uh, curb appeal. And um, also, uh, as uh, uh, we stated, that uh, we're going to be adding a, a brief uh, new landscape uh, to the front and two uh, garden walls. Do we have any questions for Mr. Notch? 
Yeah, actually, I got yes, some couple questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I noticed you're replacing the driveway. Is that the, re the cement driveway is going to be report? Um, yeah, we're planning on uh, possibly uh, replacing it with the uh, um, salt finish uh, um, concrete. He's going to ask if they had considered doing a, a you know, water permeable driveway as opposed to a solid one, uh, something, say, if we're entering a drought era. Uh, I was wondering, have that had been part of the consideration at all? Um, we really haven't uh, discussed it, but it's something we could consider. Um, on the landscaping plan, it says existing ice plant to remain. I noticed when I went out there and also in the photographs, it's actually, it's all ivy. It's not, there didn't seem to be any ice plant. It was, is that a the ivy that was going to remain, or were you doing the ice plant? Uh, well, uh, I believe there was some ice plant initially, but uh, I think it was removed possibly when the, there's uh, existing forever ties there now. Right. Yeah, I just know, you know, you can see it in the picture. It's, it's a, a hillside of ivy there. Um, the, the last one was the issue, the mar marathon sod, or, you know, has, again, any consideration been given to, you know, minimal watering on the landscape? Um, I, spo I, I think it's possible. We could consider it true. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next card we have is Suzanne Berman. She's one of the owners, and she just submitted her card in case you had questions. So. Oh, okay. Uh, like do we have any speak, questions though, for the owner of the property? And I'll, you, I'll ask the uh, same questions to you. Are those, are those something that you I, might I consider? Just oh, to if you could just state your name and I'll just... Oh, yeah, my okay. name is Suzanne Berman, and I live at 3620 St. Elizabeth Road, Glendale, 91206. Um, the question about the door is that we're adding a very small gate, and the gate matches the door. The design on the gate is really the only design in a very, very simple house. And then the, the front door is going to be a glass door with um, brown metal that matches the front gate. So it actually has some continuity and gives it a little bit of style. So I'd like to keep the door the way we had planned it. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, what you may ask you about the you know water permeable driveway or uh, end or the landscape going to a. I'll have to say I'm kind of ignorant about a water permeable driveway, where the driveway okay. is on a slant. So the right. water pretty much rolls down. Right. Uh, yeah, and I, that's a, you know I'm not the architect on the board, so I couldn't. But <laughs> yeah, we are in an issue of drought, and that's one of the issues that you know your water bill and the city is certainly pushing drought tolerant landscaping as opposed to sod and. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It is ivy in the front of the it house on that incline. Yeah, and we right. wanted to get Ice plant's of, a good idea. Get that, rid of so. that ivy, and we wanted to do it do much more plant. drought tolerant and okay. natural. Okay. Your, your water so bill will So the lawn appreciate. is being much smaller in the front because okay. it's being, you know, replaced by the room. Okay. Right. Thank you. Oh, I think okay. that's it. Thank you. We also have a card for Dan Berman. Did you want to come up or? <clears throat> okay. And if you could also state your name and address for the record. Dan Berman at 3620 St. Elizabeth Road in Glendale, 91206. I, I want to understand the question about the the water permeable driveway. I mean, it seems that mm -hmm. a, a concrete driveway is more drought tolerant than grass. Well, the, the intent of the, the permeable is to allow the rain water to actually stay on the site instead of washing everything oh. on the driveway down right. to the gutter and then down to the, you know. Okay, I didn't understand. Line. Yeah, it's not a, you're, not, you're not planting grass on your driveway. with with It's it's a driveway that lets the water stay on the site as opposed to all flow off. Oh, okay. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to our architect and okay. see what that's involved, what's involved with that. Sounds right. good. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We have no more cards on the project. Is there anyone else here to speak on the project? No? Okay, great. We'll close it and we'll discuss. My turn? Cool. Um, I, you know, it's a very simple change to the house. I, I went out and looked at it. Um, I, I made my couple of comments on the drought tolerant. Uh, as far as the gate goes, you know, I, I, I'm either way, I, especially now that the applicant has come and, you know, that's something that they're focused on. I, I don't have a problem with the... With, uh, the wrought iron gate and the matching door. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a very simple addition. It's very nicely done. Um, so I don't. I mean, the design of the gate and the door is. It's, um, it looks out of place to me. It's a nice design in, on its own, but it's, it seemed a bit too rich for the simple nature of the house. But I'm not going to 
not support the project because of that. I think you know, these kinds of details will tend to sort of take care of themselves. Um, I do agree with the driveway. If there's anything we can do, because to replace existing with a, another slab. Right. Yeah, you know, if you weren't tearing it up. Yeah, you know, I think right. I would use pavers, you know, uh, laid on sand rather than than concrete. That way your water percolates and stays on the site and you're not washing on the curb or the gutter. So I would I would tend to even require that uh, since we're doing very, it's a simple remodel and to make that driveway a paver rather than than a concrete it's a simple solution. Would Maybe a little bit more money because uh, it's cheaper to do concrete than to put pavers but mm -hmm. In the long run, I think it could be better for the house and for the neighborhood. Would that maybe be if it's replaced? If it's replaced, yeah, if it's, if it's not replaced, yeah, right. then I, there's nothing we can do about it. But right. um, okay, other than that, I, I will support the project. I I will leave it up to the designer on the gate, yeah, and the door. If if you strongly feel strongly about it, mm -hmm. you know, go for it. Um, I also want to commend the, the designer on the project. I think it's a, it's a simple addition to it, but then you've taken these little moves of the gate and those kinds of um, <coughs> things are a little more innate on it and created something a little nicer in the detailing of it. Um, I, I also like the the front sort of retaining walls that you've created because that corner is pretty daunting as you're dri driving down. It's, that's, that's all you see basically is half the house. And so I think you can have something a little more elegant in the front. and. Uh, um, and, the, and the addition, you really are only going to see the top of it off of that anyway, but I think it's, it's a good move there. Um, the driveway, I would say, really consider it because it is part of the front of your house because it is tilted at such an angle that it becomes part of the, the scape of that. So, And you know, maybe some varied colors on that would actually accent the house pretty well. Um, I, I'm ready to support the project as is. I think it's well done. And. Uh, Get a motion. What was the question on the windows? I missed that. Was there the new windows? They're actually calling out for. I think it was aluminum, it's aluminum, aluminum clad recess yeah, window. Aluminum clad with so there be wood on the inside. Yes. And what's there right now? What's the existing? It's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, I, we can bring them back up to I think we included that as a condition because it wasn't noted on the plans. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, I didn't see it. Material board might. Oh, is, is, is that? I didn't see it. Yeah, I, th I see. Uh, uh, there's nothing here that I can see. Pella. The new one, it says it's, it's an yeah. aluminum clad, but... Yeah, so because it wasn't noted on the plans, we just included included that just to make sure that we have that information when we're reviewing the project during plan check. Okay. But that's what's intended. Okay. okay. I think we're good. Very good. So I'll make a motion to approve with conditions of uh, uh, the wood clad window. Okay. Metal, clad. Metal. Aluminum clad. Oh, I'm sorry, aluminum clad recess Well, that's what windows. they're calling out for. We just have to put it on the plans, yeah. Uh, right. And uh, and I would not strike the second one, uh, the one about the gate, that condition that staff was suggesting. I would strike that. You want to leave it? Or yeah. Strike, I would strike it. Yeah, what about the driveway? Did you include the uh, I, I would make it a consideration. I mean, I... I, I it's your motion. Yeah. <laughs> a consideration that, uh, you know, drought-tolerant landscaping and and water permeable pavement be used if the driveway is replaced if the driveway is replaced okay and just to clarify our understanding is that the windows are called out um, just for the new windows that there isn't a plan to replace the existing windows okay but the new will match the, the, existing the new window. aluminum clad windows because the existing windows are aluminum they're probably a little bit different my guess is the section on the existing windows is probably a little bit smaller but the material will will match they'll all be aluminum could, could we would you consider putting something there that the new windows to match existing as much as possible into the yes. profile okay as far as profile as far as depth just the profile, the profile the profile itself yeah. so they don't look like two totally different two different kinds of windows mm -hmm. right. You're going to second it? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, Good. motion made. By, He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. <laughs> motion made by Mr. Ellis, seconded by Mr. Aliano. This would be roll call. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Aliano? Yes. And Mr. Yu? Yes. Motion carries 3 nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we moved uh, the Virginia to the end, right? Yeah, I think we're going to have to, Adam. yeah. So. Thanks, Lake. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, or are you going to confuse them so all downstairs? So we'll move to <laughs> third project. Uh, Liz, Linda Vista. Yeah, 1-PDR-2009-011-P1, 3431, Linda Vista Road. Oh, my. Oh, my. Thank you, Chairman Yu and board members. The next item before you is uh, located, as stated by you, 3431 Linda Vista Road. Uh, it is case number 1PDR 2009-11-P1. Uh, the applicant is proposing um, a preliminary review for this project. Uh, this is a first-time submittal. Uh, the project is located in the R1 All Floor Area District 3 zone. The subject site is currently undeve undeveloped at this time. It is approximately 207,520 square feet, which is approximately 4.76 acres. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct a one-story single-family residence containing 6,420 square feet of livable area with a three-car garage approximately 655 square feet. Um, the subject lots, as you can see by the location map, is actually front three, three streets, uh, Linda Vista Road, Buckingham Road, and Figaro uh, Avenue. Um, it, there's an existing asphalt driveway uh, located at Linda Vista. Linda Vista Road is the widest street, um, and that will be the access to the proposed house. Uh, as you can see on the site plan, uh, the driveway will the access from, from Linda Vista and will wrap pretty much around the house towards the north and uh, the garage will be lo located to the north of the property. Um, the subject property is located in Chevy Chase neighborhood which is considered one of our ranch home neighborhood. Uh, homes in this neighborhood are developed in the ranch style, however, um, it, it does contain other, other styles um, mixed in with, with the ranch. Uh, aesthetic. The house, as proposed, if you look at the site planning, um, does not seem to, well, the, the shape of the lot is irregular as well as the pad. There's a pad at the top of the subject lot, which is approximately uh, 21,000 square feet, the pad, the, the flat building pad alone. Uh, as proposed, the house does not appear to uh, follow the shape of the pad uh, where it's placed. It, it, it's the, or, oriented in the south, north-south direction, and as proposed, it appears to bisect the pad in, in two, so into, uh, in the middle. Um, the north and south portion of the house are placed to the edge of the building pad, and the house appears to loom over adjoining property the way it is situated uh, right now. The overall, the overall site planning may be improved by pulling the building back away from the edges. Um, all existing landscape will, uh, will not be removed uh, that exists on the slope right now. However, new landscape will be provided uh, on the building pad itself uh, where it will not be taken up by uh, the building pad. It will include a new um, pool, barbecue area, as well as a uh, landscaping and hardscape. Most homes on adjoining properties are located below this property, as you can see also in the section provided by the applicant uh, that's pinned up on the board for you. Uh, a large house is possible uh, on this lot, uh, given the lot size. The lot, again, is substantially larger than most property uh, in this area. However, um, it should not appear overly large to surrounding properties. As shown on the drawings, uh, the elevation drawings, the project is well articulated on all sides, and the home appears to incorporate, incorporate two forms coming together and create an L shape around the, the entry pavilion. 
the varied roof lines uh, also helps in addressing the mass and scale in a combination as well as the combination of flat and pitch roof design. The proposed height of the building is 16 feet high. Design, the design of the proposed home appears eclectic, eclectic with influences of uh, traditional and contemporary uh, design. While one design is not preferred over the other, um, architectural precedent is an important consideration for any chosen style. The project shows influence, uh, influences of Mediterranean revival, um, as well as influences of contemporary uh, architecture. So uh, since the applicant is, is requesting a preliminary review, staff as well as the applicant is looking to the board uh, for input as well as feedback uh, so that the applicant and the project can move forward um, to the final review. However, given the character of the lot and, and the concerns that may be related to, to this development, an environmental review will be required as well as a conditional use permit, which will be processed uh, at a later time um, before the project comes back as a final review. So staff actually is not recommending the project is which is looking to the board for input. However, we have worked with the applicant as well as the, the property owners uh, prior to coming to the board, and we have suggested some conditions as, as well as consideration that may be appropriate to this project. If you would like, I can go over each of the items. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why don't we go through it real quick. Okay, so these, these are some of the conditions and consideration proposed by staff. Number one, the footprint of the building in the north-south direction should be pulled away from the edge of the building pad. Two, the building footprint and form should complement the shape of the building pad or orient in the same direction. Three, the amount of hardscape paving on the building pad should be reduced. Four, an improved circulation around the garage should be provided. Five, driveway leading to subject property should feature decorative paving. Six, landscape screening should be employed around the garage area. Seven, the selected architectural con concept should be supported by a level of consistency throughout and should be executed authentically. Eight, introduce more forms in building aside from uh, the super articulated walls. Nine, the volume of the building should be simplified. And if the pr proposed contemporary classical design is to be pursued further, only high quality materials should be used, such as concrete moldings for window surrounds, door, roof, uh, parapet, garage door, concrete coins and keystones, as well as wood windows windows with three-dimensional divided lights, dimensional stone, not stone veneer, and smooth plaster, steel trowel uh, finish. 11, all windows should be recessed with minimum 1.5 inches from the exterior face of the wall and should possess a three-dimensional quality to them. 12, wood garage, should, wood garage doors should be used. And 13, coins should be applied in logical location and consistently. 14, windows around should be used consistently on all windows, and materials and colors should complement one another and blend in with the hillside. And that concludes my presentation. The applicant and property owners are in the audience to answer any questions you may have and to present <coughs> the case further if needed. Thank you. I have a question for you. Um, was, has there been a project on that lot before? Or? I mean, it's vacant currently. I just was wondering, was there a house there at one time? Uh, no. That you know? Okay. Not yet. And you mentioned a conditional use permit. Why would that be required? The conditional use permit is required for the slope of the subject lot. I got you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for staff? Okay. We have a few cards. Uh, first one, we'll start with uh, Garo Nazarian. If you could please come up and just state your name and address for the record. 
Good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Garu Nazarian with Domus Design. Uh, my address is 109 East Harvard Street, Suite 306 in Glendale. The project is presented to the board today. It's located within, within a very large uh, property, 4.7 acres, with a long driveway. The property is essentially in a hillside environment, but it does have a large flat pad on the higher level of the land. This pad is virtually invisible and or shielded from the neighboring properties and the immediate public right of way. There is a current rest restriction on the property which limits the height of the construction, which is part of the, I think it was the subdivision condition, the maximum height of the structure should be 16 feet. Mm. The current property owner wanted a Mediterranean style house classical design for the house without being overwhelming or excessively ornate. It is for this reason that we are proposing classical approach to the design of the house, which is definitely influenced by the classical Italian architecture. It is rather elegant, but uh, with clean, almost simple architectural details. It is very important to mention that the architectural finishes are proposed to be real, high and quality materials, and no fake moldings or uh, simple finishes are contemplated. The house itself has a two wings approach, as mentioned uh, rather, with a central hallway, foyer, the private bedrooms are in the one side of the house and the living area, in the daytime uh, usable area in the other side. It has an open floor approach to the project with minimum number of the spaces include, enclosed by the walls. The house itself is located on the flat portion of the um, pad toward the rear of the property, almost tucked under the heavy and mature trees, shielding this project from the neighboring property. The story poles will be placed on the property by the 16 feet high story poles. It has been placed there and which, uh, which are not visible from the street. Right. And, um, mm, and I want to share here that we shared this project with the uh, Chevy Chase Homeowner Association twice. One, maybe five, six times ago when the Mr. Bill uh, Dick Mary was alive. They supported the project because it passed five, six months for the, since that time. About this last weekend, we met again with the Homeowner Association and we asked them to give us input and their concerns. They don't have any concerns. They support the project. Mm. And as a part of the over overall project, a detailed landscaping plan will be presented in the future, improve the site development concept of the project with elaborate quality hand uh, hardscape Landscaping, hardscape, water elements, and a pool. If I have any question, I will be happy to answer. Do you have any questions for the applicants? And just I want to, to mm -hmm. add, uh, uh, as uh, it has been presented by the staff, the FAR on this property it's 0 0.03 because it's a 4.7 right. acre land and we are proposing only 6,000 square feet, 6,500 square feet. I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, can you just briefly go over, I guess, what your concept was and how to site the building on the plat on the top part of the of the site? Because the original intent was uh, to keep the house back from the front toe line facing to the street. And as the uh, staff mentioned, doesn't follow the shape of the pad. The, sh the pad itself, it's uh, running perpendicular to the uh, Linda Vista. Mm -hmm. If I follow the pad, the house, it will become close to the um, uh, toe line of the front property, which is facing to the street, and our intent was to hide the building as much as possible from the street. Uh, because, again, it's, it's a one-story building because I have that limitation, but again, I didn't want to bring to the, uh, next to the toe line 
to make visible or because it's the almost this highest house, uh, it will be highest house in the neighborhood, I want to keep it as much as, you know, back, not to, to give a huge uh, look to the building. But isn't so that, that what's happening on this end, though? Beg your pardon? Isn't that what's happening on this end? Almost overhanging the, the pad. It, it, it's on the edge of the pad, but uh, by looking to the... Can I approach to... Sure. Why don't you come up? There's the Use pointer. This, the pointer right there. I got you. Sorry, it looks so. like the, <laughs> the pad is here. Okay. These portions are just overhanging. And this, uh, because we didn't receive on time the actual survey map, I did use the GIS map of the city. Okay. Uh, but we ordered the survey map. When I will receive, I will look to that point. But <coughs> again, even if I will try to solve that issue, you know, not to have overhang, but again, on these two edge, looking to this side, you know, this, it's uh, facing to this uh, side, which is, there is no public street, public right of way, and other houses there, and this one. But uh, the final plan, it will be, more accurate when I receive my final uh, and, uh, is, survey map. Is the building actually intended to narrow the existing road from 22 to no, 12? No, no, With the building? I think on the plotting, the house, no. We are, this driveway, it's far below of this path. No, we are not going to so approach. So then you're cantilevering over the road? No. That is a <laughs> plotting mistake, I think. We when can they, only go with what you they, provide for us. No, so. no, it is not. It's a stay on this. Are you saying that the, the building will be pulled back then? Yes. Yes. Okay. And the existing road right now is a pretty damaged asphalt. What are, you, what are you planning on doing to the treatment of that? We are going to resurface it. With the asphalt? Mm, with the asphalt, yes. And the condition that, uh, you know, the suggestion of the stuff that uh, the decorative driveway, the front portion of that, you know, on the street, you know, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 feet of the front portion could be decorative. But as you see, it's a very long driveway. Yeah. The meaningless to have all decorative driveway. As well, driveway. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for that. I actually had one question for you now that you brought up. People on Linda Vista are only going to see the gate, the driveway. And I, has there been any thought into what what that might be like? It will be presented to you for okay. on the final drawing. Gotcha. Okay. Because our intent on this one first was to meet with the uh, Chevy Chase Homeowner Association to have their inputs and their support, which fortunately they support the project, and to have some input from you for the design of the house. But the final plans, if you gotcha. want, okay. with all these details, by the gates. And okay. Do we have any other questions for you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, are you the... I just live in the area, fucking Yango. If you could fill out a card, we'll, we'll be more than happy to give you your time. Okay, that's Please fine. Do. Then let me go through the cards, and then uh, if you can fill it out right now, then we'll put you in right at the back of it, and you can have your time. Uh, the next person, uh, Dan Hayes, if you could come up and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Dan Hayes, and uh, I live at uh, 3431 Linda Vista, which is right across the street below the subject property. And uh, uh, we've lived there for 22 years, so uh, and my concerns, are, uh, as I have spoke before the board on occasion in the past, is that the drainage off that uh, driveway. It's a long driveway, and even on a modest rain, the rain comes down that driveway and runs across the street, adding to the other flow coming off of Figueroa all the way down Linda Vista, which is right in front of my house. And I have a downhill driveway. And the city, we had the city out there once before, and they came in and uh, did a little bit of carving out of the blacktop in order to keep it. But on occasion, when we have a heavy rain, I get up to six feet of water in front of that. There's a lot of drainage. There is a culvert on the right-hand side of that driveway, which is a, uh, between the two properties and the adjacent mm -hmm. property owner. So I certainly encourage you to engineer that driveway so that the water flow does not come across the street and down right. my property. So that's the first thing. 
Second, uh, for 20 years I've talked to the fire department about the weed and brush abatement on that property. There's a great amount of dead brush that's right above my property that's been up there. That needs to be cleared out. I, I don't care if you want to keep the natural foliage for certain parts of it, but they need to clean up those lots up there so we don't have a fire hazard as a part of your consideration. And lastly, recently we received letters in our area not to park below oak trees. And this was done by the city of Glendale. Uh, and right down below that property access is the only flat area. And I am concerned that construction workers for three to six months, well, that's the only place they can park. So I'm concerned that they'll be parking down below those three oak trees that are down there. And we've just recently been received notice not to have any kind of parking in that property. So I don't own the property, but I own one oak tree. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have pictures. It's some flow, but I think if you've been up there, you know what can happen. I'm sure the water comes off that driveway. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> The next card that I have is for Palma Vincenti. If you could state your name and address, please. Thank you, design board members, and good evening. I'm Palma Vincenti, and um, my husband, John, and I live at 3365 Figueroa Street in Glendale, 91206, which is adjacent to the property. It's right up above it. If you take a look at the screen, you see the swimming is pool. That, that's your lot? Right. Right. Okay. okay, and then it drops down in the back where the swimming pool is, right. about um, maybe ten feet. Right. I, I just wanted to give you, make you aware of the history of those lots and why there is a condition and um, a conditional agreement, because this was we've owned the property, our property, since 1977. And that was a very important consideration in purchasing the property because it was all owned by the same owner at one time. They got a divorce, the McCanns. The woman owned the property with the house on it that we bought. And then down below on the lot that's proposed now for building, the husband got that in the divorce. But they made an agreement between themselves that goes along with the property that nothing would ever be built on that lot that would impede in any way the view from the property that we have purchased. And I think that that's why it says um, 16 feet. And I'm sorry, I don't have the exact paperwork um, with me. And I think that that comes up in the um, preliminary title search. But I would like to have a copy of that so that we adhere to exactly what the intent was and what, what is stated there. So I believe it is 16 feet, but I'd like to know we're measuring 16 feet from what? The bare dirt? Or are they going to count in foundation, which will raise it? And then what really concerns me is that my view would be extremely impacted by chimneys. And with a recent conversation with uh, Rather Duong, he told me that, that the height of the chimney is not included in the height of the building. And I don't see on the specs how high those chimneys are. But there are three of them. And since I don't know where they're placed, they could really have a very negative impact on our view. So that is a very main consideration. Also, um, I'm just concerned about uh, the fire department <clears throat> having access. Is there enough turnaround up there for a fire truck? That's a very steep slope. I don't even know if a fire truck can come up that hill because I know police cars have had trouble going up that slope before. So that's really something to take um, take into consideration. Also, space for visitor parking and how long this is going to take to construct. Where are the construction vehicles going to park? So those are my main concerns. Thank you. Do we have any questions for you? Yeah, question. Vila, do you know if this restriction of 16 feet is a private matter or is a city zoning issue that we don't touch upon, or rather? I, uh, Mr. Nsu, I was in the process of researching that information. However, I have not been successful, so I will continue 
looking for doc this documentation, and uh, once I find it, um, I will have a conversation with the city attorney's office. Do you know what the current zoning for this property is with Based respect to city maximum height? The, the maximum height for a structure that has a flat roof is 32 feet in the okay. zone, okay. with a pitch roof is 35 feet. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm no attorney, and I thank goodness every day. And I'm not that smart, but we have had other measures and matters in the past that they have been private matters, and we have been restricted to enforce those or apply those. We only have them, we're only empowered by the city of Glendale zoning requirements. So, this matter concerning 16 feet may not be something that we can review or speak about. It is commendable for me that the designer restricted his design to 16 feet, but we may not have jurisdiction to go up or That's down. That's a private matter. Okay. Well, it's a covenant that runs with the property. It's recorded. Yes. But we, but if, again, I don't want to speak out of turn, but if he decided to build a 28-foot high house, and if the current zoning for the city of Glendale allows that, we can only review and approve or deny concerning the city of Glendale zoning issues. Private matters are not something that we can get involved with. So, and again... But, <clears throat> But it is commendable that he is respecting that 16-foot height okay. um, in his but design. What I'd like to know, though, is that including, and I guess we'll have to get the exact wording that goes that goes with it. Does that include the height of the chimneys? They would not. But the city of Glendale may not have power to even. Okay. Speak well, then upon the, that. I guess that would be a matter for us to discuss with the title company that recorded it because that was a condition upon which we purchased the right. property, knowing that it was a condition that would run with the land. Right. Okay. Yeah, before you step out, can, can staff comment on where building height is measured from under the Glendale Code? Uh, the building height is measured from the lowest point the building comes out of the ground okay. to the highest point, excluding, by, excluding the chimney. Yeah, excluding chimneys and other projections of such type. Okay. They still have to fall under the max, though, don't they? Do they not? The chimney? No, there's no, no limit on the even, chimney. Even if uh, the house is being proposed to go up to 35 feet, the chimney is not included in the wall height. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. The height of the there, there usually is none. It's a matter of the engineer draft required to make it function. It's a certain height above the highest point, yeah. But usually you don't see something bigger than six or seven feet yeah. because the angle of the roof and all that other stuff. But And we would comment on it, I would think. Yeah. If, it, That's if it's 13 would, feet uh, high, uh, the I'd next, comment on it. The next card that I have is Susan Tintori. Hi. Your name and your address, please. Thank Susan you. Tintori, and I live at 3441 Linda Vista Road, and I am property that is right next to next to it. You shared the driveway basically that No, that, it's, we have a separate driveway. But they're adjoining? The driveways are adjoining? It's adjoining. Next to each other. Okay. Exactly. Um just to give you if I may approach. Right. Um I know that the Overall property is is well over four acres, but I really think that the consideration for this mass of this house should be restricted to the size of the building pad. And it appears to me that the house is overly large. It doesn't sit comfortably on that building pad. And I believe that, for me, there's way too much hardscape and not enough green space. Zurich, of course, is wonderful. Um, the overall impression I get is this is like watching the Queen Mary dock in Catalina Harbor. And I will be impacted. Our home will be impacted because there are story poles. This is my house. And um, I will we'll take that, but if you could go back because we're, it's all being recorded. It's just I, will, I will be looking at that structure. Um, the mixed materials used in the house is of, is of a concern. I'd like to see more cohesiveness. Um, referring back to the massive side, there is no other home in the area that even approaches this this mass. I think they've sacrificed form and function for mass. Um, I'm, I am concerned that this house is being built edge to edge because I'm going to be affected. Um, I, I also concur with the previous statement that the length of, 
of time it's going to take to build this house will be a consideration. It will impact the neighborhood. Where are they going to park um, during deliveries, during trucks or whatever going up the driveway? I may not be able to get out and turn onto Chevy Chase. Um, another issue for me is safety. Um, about a year and a half ago, there were kids, I'm assuming there were kids that climbed to the top of this property, and they were shooting off firecrackers. And because this is a very dangerous fire zone, we called the police immediately. Four squad cars showed up, two stayed at the bottom, two went up. One squad car made it to the top, the other one couldn't. I, I think because he was behind the first one, he just didn't have enough momentum. So in case of fire, uh, is a consideration, can a hook and ladder get up there? Can police get up there? Can they turn around? Can they do their job? Because what happens to that property mm -hmm. and surrounding will could affect my house. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say also that um, I commend the staff for their presentation, and I, I fully support and agree with their comments and conditions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Thank you. Next card I have is Kenny Tintori. <laughs> Your time's up. Yeah, that's fast. Okay. Thank you. My name is Kenny Tintori. I live at 3441 Linda Vista, which is adjacent just below on the uh, south side. Um, I want to thank the board members for me to speak. Uh, first, I want to wish staff for doing a good report, and we agree with um, a lot of the uh, requirements or modifications, you might say, which is basically the um, house size to be reduced, move the house away from the edge, which is very strange, uh, change the orientation of the house, and change the shape of it to fit the pad a little better. Um, one of my major concerns is that the present design and placement of this house will destroy two or three um, mature oak trees. If I can show you these, uh, as you can see, a story pole. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. This is my property, and this is house. I forgot this one too. One tree, looking at one tree number one, is a 40-foot canopy right on the edge of the property where he wants to build his house. That tree will have to be destroyed if he plans to put in a house there in that size of a house. Uh, there's also, um, excuse me, three pine trees where he plans to put his um, turnaround driveway in front of his house. And it's not showing the pine trees on his plan, but they are huge and massive, and I do have pictures of the pine trees there. Uh, there's no reason that the root system or these trees should be destroyed. This pad is very large. The house is just too large for this pad. Uh, the north-south side of this house orings the flat pad. We don't understand why. Uh, on the south side, it will look massive and out of character with the hillside. Also, erosion will happen just because of the disturbance of the soil, not to mention the natural movement of the ground. I mean, we are a fault up there and a slide area by the city of Glendale. If, if this house is reduced and moved away from the pad, the oak trees will be saved, the pine trees will be saved. The owner could also landscape with zero tolerance, a flat area around the land, instead of having a, a roof line just to catch all the water. Um, it seems that this house was not designed for this pad. It was just placed here and just stuck in the middle of it. Um, if it was designed properly, you wouldn't have a garage that you had to back out of in a 17-foot driveway that overhangs a cliff on the far on the other side. It just seems it's very dangerous to back out with a 16-foot car. How do you turn around? Um, if we could reduce the size of this property and the size of this house, let's say to 4,500 square feet, it'd still be the largest house in the area by around 1,000 or more. You still see he's the biggest house, but we are a quiet little Kenyan neighborhood. This is not the flatlands of Beverly Hills where you can build these huge mansionization houses. I thought we were trying to stop all this. This house is just too large for this flat pad up there. I mean, we don't say you can't build. We, we want to build fine. Just reduce the size and make the house fit better to the landscape. I guess I'm done. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh. Question? There's actually another oak tree that I think you might have. I have noticed. three oak trees. There's All the pines there. Yeah, but there's a little oak tree right about yeah, here. Yeah, but that, I figured that one's kind of small. That one could get away with the city. <laughs> it's only about 
three inches in diameter. Uh, yeah. And I think you have an inch and a half. I think anything out over an inch and a half or two inches. Well, I thought it was six inches at the base or six inches. Up. Well, I don't know. Yeah. No, then, six then, then there's, no there. there's a lot of those. Questions? Yes. What's your profession? I am a television editor. And your wife's profession? She is a graphics for television. And forgive me, the, your neighbor's profession. Uh, oh, your name. Uh, your, your your profession? I'm a graphics Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Actually, I had a question. Sure. Go ahead. No, I'm, I was just going to say thank you. Uh, the meetings that they held, um, were, were they attended by? They never invited us. We never knew about the meetings. And I'm surprised the um, <laughs> the uh, of States okay. didn't contact us personally because we, we knew Dick Murray to come to our house. Your members said you weren't contacted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we're surprised that they would not approach us first. If they had, we could have probably talked about these, these little problems up front. Right. Thank you. Thank you. The last card that I have is David uh, for Zabadi. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. David for Zabadi, 3096 Buckingham Road. Thank you, but I had a, a simple question, rather a simple question. Knowing, hearing the size of the house and the, and the largeness of the, of the lot, which I think they are pretty relevant. Uh, my biggest concern is that that gentleman mentioned that the, the house is really not that visible from Linda Vista, Buckingham, or, or Figueroa. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And how far? Is, I mean, where is the entrance to the to the house? Is it from uh, Linda Vista you can't or Figueroa? Cross. You can't, you can't cross communicate in that way. You okay. can he pose the question, and then we can pose it to him. We can bring him up to to answer those questions um, after you, you, you're done with your time. So. Okay. Um, your one question was regarding if it's visible from those three streets. Right. What was the other questioning? The other question is, how, uh, my main concern is how far is it from my driveway, Buckingham? And the, the, the concern is to see, you know, if it's going to, to have any impact on the driveway and on the, on the traffic there, and, you know, because it's a very narrow road. So it's up there then, right? It looks like the driveway is off of Linda Vista. It's not off of Buckingham. Off of Buckingham, there is a driveway. Oh, oh no, the, the driveway. There is the house. no. The driveway is the existing driveway here, as proposed, off. off of Linda Vista. Linda Vista, right? That's I wasn't sure about. That's right. that was my main concern. Thank you, anyways. Thank you. Well, maybe we should take care of that one matter before. Yeah, if you could just come back up and uh, again for the record, your name and your address. Garo Nazarian, 109 East Harvard, number 306 in Glendale. I want to answer to some. Uh, well, specifically yeah. to his question. But first. I have okay. other uh, okay. Then. items to ha I have to answer it. First of all, we presented this project to the homeowner association chair and uh, two members. Mr. Do you know the names? Bill. Bill. And they told us that they will present the project to the members. And they told us that they presented, they discussed it, there is no concern. I want to address the drainage issue. The, the, uh, the driveway is existing there, but of course when uh, after the construction we are not going to, to keep the driveway as it is because even for our benefit it's a, it will be a nice custom house or dream house of the owner, the, the, my, my client. We will improve as much as possible the driveway. And after that, after the design review board approval, I have to go to the, uh, the different departments, fire departments, engineering, building departments, to have their approvals. And I, we have to answer all to these, you know, codes, you know, the drainage issue and all these uh, issues, it will be reviewed by the city department. The brush, of course, the property, it's, we entered just in escrow. We didn't purchase yet. We are working on this project. As I mentioned before, again, it will be the property with a nice house on it, and we will take care of all these you know, brushes because it will be our project there, and the safety, and the, the safety of the uh, project, it will be our first concern. The parking issue during the construction, it's a, about maybe maybe 1,500 feet long driveway. 
uh, none of the construction vehicles will park on the uh, on the Linda Vista. We do have a I do we do have a driveway 18 feet some places and it goes to the 24 or even some places to 30 feet <coughs> and on the top where the pad it is in the you know beside of the construction site the footprint of the building it's a uh, enough space to park all the construction vehicles and the construction as you see on the plans the pad it's there there is, it, there is no retaining wall or any grading involved on this project, so there is no dirt removal, and it will be a just very straightforward project, and I think the project, it won't take more than six or seven months to build. And for the height of the building, we saw that condition on the prelim, 16 feet max, and we respect that, and we are trying to keep that uh, covenant, even if it's not a city ordinance, we are going to comply with that, because we don't want to bother any of our neighbors. But the chimneys, the fireplaces that we are going to use in this project, it's not wood burn, because wood burn uh, fireplaces is not allowed. So that is only decorative. If that will satisfy our neighbors, even I can eliminate the chimneys. The gas burner fireplaces, they need j just a pipe, vent pipe going out. So that is a just, I thought maybe it will be some element on the, you know, in, in, to uh, complement the design of the house, I can eliminate the chimneys or I can lower it. It's not a big issue or I'm not insisting to have the chimneys. If you could just quickly answer his question, uh, your time has already expired. Mm, uh, yes, what, what, uh, the question was? <laughs> I, think, I believe the, the first the, question the was... The driveway is from the Linda Vista. Right. right. We are not uh, proposing any new, new driveway from the Buckingham. Right. Mm. And uh, the entry of the house, uh, can I show there on the Please. side plan? Please. Driveway. This corner, it will be the garage, three-car garage, which they park and on the plan uh, uh, against of what one of the neighbors mentioned, 17 feet back up. I do have enough 25 feet back up there. And the main entrance of the house, it's here. That is the main entrance of the house, which is from the rear of the property. Mm -hmm. Because, as I mentioned, we, we want to keep the house far back from the tow line. So that is the entrance of the house. I believe the question was from the three streets, would the house be visible and from any of those three streets? What I checked, mm -hmm. I did, I can tell you 99% it's not visible. Some corners, because, because of, on this section you, you will see, this is the, this is the street, that is the street, the, the pad is there. The house is not visible. Beside of the because slope of the and the and setback of the house from the tow line, because of the uh, trees, mature trees that we do have, it's all the screen. Even from this house, next door uh, house, there is a, about 13 feet this level. That is a 1307 elevation. That is uh, 1320, I think. Uh, yeah, it, about 13. 13 20. To about 13 feet this level from these two, which is covered, you know, it's full of the mature trees. And on this project, we are not, you know, we are not trying to remove any mature trees. We are going to keep it. What about the ones, the oaks that are under the building plan? Uh, there is no oak on the uh, construction site area. Only there is a one oak tree in, in this location, which we are not going to touch it. It remains. Maybe we have to trim it by the right. permit. But no when, removal. When you bring it for final, you're sure. going to have a I will survey show you with the existing trees. Yeah, I asked right. the surveyor to show me exact the drip line of the trees and the location. Okay. What is your plan for that area where it starts to climb up and towards the front area? Here? Yeah, what is the... What does that hatch mean? And no, the, this, this is uh, just a, about a four or five feet retaining wall to create uh, this... Uh, uh, that's that's some that's some excavation yeah. in the retaining wall yeah, to, it's to about make a four open feet four, four five feet max height. Okay. Isn't each one of those dashed lines two feet? 
the full one-fifth. Four, six, eight, ten. No, no, no. Two, two foot, 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 two, two foot. foot. No, two foot increments. Two, two foot. Two yeah, foot, two foot, foot. So that's eight feet at the highest point then. As I mentioned, this is a preliminary. I didn't right. receive my final survey okay. now. It will be addressed all this because we are trying to uh, avoid any grading there. We are not going to cut the hill. Just maybe okay. if it's a two feet or three feet, up to five feet retaining wall, if I have to do it, I will do it, but I'm trying to avoid any major grading. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have no more cards for this project. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on the project? If you could state your name and address and then fill out a card afterwards, please. John Vincenti, 3365 Figueroa, Glendale. I just have a, a question for staff. In, in a project like this, is it customary for the fire department to make a survey and for the safety? Because we're in a real heavy-duty fire area up there, and that's just our concern. Does the fire department give their stamp of approval on What do you mean by survey? Like could you clarify what you mean by survey, I guess? What well, does the fire department come out and, and take a look at what you're doing? They review the plans. They do. That's, that, was do. All, that was yeah. my question. Thank and you. also, um, Mr. Chair and member of the board, uh, questions or concerns were raised concern, uh, regarding the oak trees, the drainage, uh, the staging area while construction is, is uh, underway, as well as traffic. Those issues are well, relevant issues. They will all be addressed in the uh, initial study and environmental review, which will be uh, processed prior to uh, the project coming back to you as a final review. Okay. And also, uh, it will also be reviewed by the zoning administrator. There may be appropriate conditions that the zoning administrator will place on the project mm -hmm. concerning the same issues. Okay. Thank you. So we have no more cards. Uh I think we've heard everybody. Um, we'll close the session and discuss. Welcome. And uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was throw you into the fire. Go ahead. Um, th this designer and this firm has a history of doing great work here in Glendale. Since I've been on the board, they've always done really good work, and this continues in their policy, so I commend you what you did. Uh, I also like when they, when they recognize that the project has a private, we think, height limitation, they comply with that. And that's certainly good because they really, I don't think they need to, but it's good that they did that. I also want to commend them for making this the middle of preliminary review to hear all this feedback and hopefully this feedback will encourage a refinement of the design if, it, if it's going back anyway, or not going back, it's not a formal submittal, it's here for preliminary. So all those things I certainly encourage and, and, and thank them because again, they consistently have always done good work. Having said that, there are some things and challenges that I know that staff has indicated here in the submittal that keep reoccurring, uh, and I'll just read a few of them real briefly, and they're all pretty much consistent. The staff comments essentially here, as proposed, a one-story structure helps achieve its this sensitivity, but can be accomplished further by breaking up the building mass into smaller compo component forms and by moving away from the edge of the slope, as mentioned above. Then they again say the board may consider as appropriate modification to the grouping of its volume, proposed expression in the building form into bolder and more formal concept. Okay, I'm trying to grasp that one, but you know, it's at least it's describing what's what they're looking at. The result, um, the result, the mass and scale would improve as well as the relationship of the house to its site planning. Okay, that's consistent thinking. Another one, building height, modest point, thirty. Oh, and it says here sixteen feet, but they could build possibly the 32 feet. Um, it is a big piece of property. 4.3 acres is huge, but often, at least many of the board members, doesn't consider that much the largeness of the piece of property because its relationship on the site and on the pad often is more important than you own a lot of acreage. That lot of acreage could be, you know, a slim, a thin sliver of property where it's seen and then you own half the hill, but its, but its placement is, is more critical than the necessary grandeur of the, of the acreage. Um, Again, the property located established in the neighborhood. Uh, they talk about its relationship to the site. Um, 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 they, they, they question, staff is questioning the design, although they're not in any one direction, but they question some of the detailing of this particular design. Mass and scale again. Um, then you look at the site plan, as some of our board members looked at, you know, the placement of the site on the adjacent property, the adjacent slopes. 
the nearness of the property, some of them even encroaching into the driveway. It is a preliminary design, and that will be fixed and tweaked, but these are all constructive things that, that I know you want to hear so that as you continue to refining the design, it will improve and enhance what you're trying to achieve here. Um, I looked at the... The, the site here. But before I go there, I wrote down some of the comments that I was hearing from the neighbors and even your presentation. I asked what the neighbors would, did as, the, as in their profession, and I unfortunately married you to him, but you in fact are married to him, I remember. So forgive me, he's probably a very decent guy, but I married you to him. Um, they're not professional designers or architects or landscapes or engineers or all that, but they have eyes and they see what, they, what we and staff and professional do see. The site appears to be secondary to the largeness of the footprint of the property. Everything appears to be for the size of the property, and this lady used nice words, form and function seems to have suffered given to the size of the structure that you want to put there. And that's not always a good thing. Form and function should be the driving force, and then you look back and see how it fits within the context. I think that I agree with the comments of staff and what the community is saying here that the project, it's not about the square footage. You can build a lot more, but once you establish the square footage that you want, how does it fit on the size site? How does it function with the site? And I think this project suffers greatly. You mentioned it, Chair, that when you look at the footprint on the property, there is big problems with the way that this thing works, whether you're right up against the hillside over here, and I know it's preliminary, but if this was going to work, you have an elevation of about 30, 38.8, 38.9, and these then become retaining walls where there's an articulation of that wall along the side. But when you see the side of the house, which is the lower right corner. that side, is it? Or no, that, that, side. that side, I never know my north. You can see you draw a straight line, and that's unfortunately not what, what you're proposing here. The same thing is over on the other side, which is the garage side, which is here, but the garage is actually encroaching in the driveway. It is preliminary, but more of what did you try to do on this site and this pad? It looks like you got a big shoehorn and trying to shove it all in there. You got to think of the site. You got a beautiful pad up there. And how did you work with it? How did you make this wonderful site, this wonderful piece of property that few people even think exists here in Glendale, which uh, the hills are already built out, and you got this wonderful, majestic site to do whatever you want, to go crazy with design, and you do this. I don't particularly care for the design. When I think of hillside homes, I think of something that's a little bit more unique and interesting. But I would, I would support and approve this design. But so much of this design is not flat like this. So much of it needs to be terraced and pushed back. I mean, you may have a flat site up there, but imagine pushing dirt forward, lowering some areas, going back in some other areas. Add some interest in this thing on the site planning. All you've done is have one complete site plan of 13.08 and you're going to build it like that. Use little retaining walls. Get some interest in this thing, and you're going to have a home that you can be proud of forever. What a piece of property you have. The site, in my opinion, is poorly situated. It's not well thought out. Everything just looks like it's just been thrown in huge. Um, I think that you, the interior is overbuilt. It's grandiose, but that's okay. That's the style. That's what you want. But to achieve that, the site and its location takes secondary position. And in closing, I commend you for submitting this as, as a preliminary. You, you, have, you, you continue to always do great work, and I have no doubt that through these comments you'll come back and really do something that you can be super proud of. Boy, what I would love to have this piece of property to design something on it. Uh, boy, I'd, this would be my, my um, magnus opus or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. Charles, you would you... That's a, it's a word I picked up one day. I don't know if it's a, anyway, um, I, I went up and looked at the property, and uh, and I, I got to agree. What you, what you you said it in very technical terms, but this house would look great on a flat pad someplace else. It doesn't fit on the hillside. Uh, you looked at that hill, and I was thinking, like, God, isn't there some way to to make the house part of the hillside as opposed to just plopped on top of it? And uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot other to say that. They're not going in the right direction. I'm not crazy about the design, but again, I'm not going to live in it. That's not necessarily, uh, it's not being built for me. Um, but boy, it's a great site, and there is a way to make a house that, uh, that would fit to the property. 
And I, I think, you know, you, you used the term earlier that, you know, it it's, has to fit the, the site that comes over uh, the form much more. It's more important, especially it's not. I think you walk around, and I, um, other than the one neighbor who lived down at the bottom of the hill, I couldn't really see anything up in the top. There are a lot of those are mature, mature trees. The pine trees are probably, you know, they what, they, 30, 40, 50 years? They're going to be gone sooner than later because they don't last that long. The other thing that was amazed to me was, and, and I, the architect had kind of explained it, but I looked at the plans and I realized the only house that you could build next to were as close to it as you could get. And, and that, naturally, the neighbors are here. It made them crazy as it would me. I was surprised also on placing the entrance and the grand entrance up against the hillside and away from, you drive up the, the driveway and the first thing you're going to see is basically the garage. Um, it, it certainly needs to have some reconsideration. And, and you know, the garage, if, if, the, if it's right up against the driveway here. This is garage. Yeah, there's well, a slope. It can't work. There's a slope yeah, there's there. a slope on that hill. Yeah, right, right, right. right. But anyway, it's anyway. good that it's preliminary. It is, and, and it's good that they're here at that point. Um, I had some questions on colors, but I think we're way far away from that. It's a pick a style and, and be true to the style, which I've heard my associates here say previously on other projects. I think that's a problem here also. There's a little bit of too many different things. Um, I can support the staff's suggestions also. I don't Thank you. My turn. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the critique thus far is right on. I think the neighbors, the board, uh, the staff is right on. Um, I couldn't agree more with those comments. I, uh, without being redundant, I, I think it seems to me that the site planning is the biggest issue. and. Uh, I was looking at the at, at the plan of the house, and you know when you look at it, um, the diagram is actually very formal. You know, it's, it's sort of this villa approach where you come into a grand hall, and then everything kind of comes off of it, and you have views in the distance. Um, but it seems to me that uh, perhaps you know what would be good on this particular project is not to try to design the house from inside out, but to try to find out what the edges have to be first, and then. Try to use those as your parameters to figure out what kind of an envelope the house should have. You know, uh, Stuart just said, you know, it, it, the project is sort of like you take a big shoe and you're trying to shove it on the side, and it's exactly right. I think uh, uh, we need to find another approach, and the one that I'm suggesting is uh, don't try to shove everything on the side. Just try to figure out, um, try to make the house smaller first of all, and see what would happen, and still to see what. What, what, what do you still be able to, to give the client what they need? I mean, there's a lot of large spaces, a lot of large rooms, and that, that's fine. I'm not saying that they should not have those kinds of spaces, but there's probably a way to do it on this side where you can actually arrange the parts of the building where you're not creating such a huge mass, you're not really extending the edges of the house to, to the, you know, the, those two edge uh, the, the property where it's quite obvious on the, on the drawing. Uh, the orientation, the main axis of the house, to me, seems that it should be in this direction, which really is the way you flow through the house. You come in from the back, and then you have an axis towards the views, which is down to the south. But it seems like the main axis is actually in the other direction. You know, it's, it's, doing, it's this. You know, that's the main axis, which is that. And it, it's not what the nature of the, the site is. The nature of the site is actually this way. That's the main axis of the, of, the, of, the, of the site. And I think you need to do everything you can to respect that because that will heal, yield a better project, a better plan, and the neighbors, I think, will be happy because then you're pulling the building away from the edges. And I, I do agree with you that it's good not to put the building right on the edge, you know, which is the main patio. Uh, you can't really see the house, actually, uh, from the street, but if you were to bring it towards the edge, like you're proposing not to do, uh, it's good. I think you're, you're on the right track from that perspective, but I think you need to do more with respect to the ends, you know, the, these guys right here, that. You know, this is definitely impacting that property because, uh, you know, this property is going to be looking right at the edge, and I think you will have to do quite a bit of retaining there. There's going to be some retainage to be done to to hold those walls. So I would just go, you know, a few feet inward um, and not go to the edge. Um, 
you know, I was thinking, you know, what would be a good, a good model for this? And I, the, the villa approach is not a bad idea. Uh, it's just that this kind of villa is kind of all sort of consolidated. It's not broken up. You could have a villa where you actually have perhaps a, you know, it could be a U-shaped villa with a courtyard in the middle. It could be two, two long bars that create a space in the middle. You know, you could uh, diagrammatically, uh, you could. Um, High up there, but instead of doing this way, maybe there could be a piece here and a piece there that create a longer courtyard that everything kind of focuses, and you still get the views, but you're creating very small pieces at the end. At the end, um, so I think the shape and the footprint is going to be really critical uh, to the success. Um, so I would I would try to move away. I would try to sort of put this aside and see what can you come up with that that actually would. would would be generated from the site itself and not from the way the house wants to be laid out internally because the internal circulation seems to be very clear, very formal. It does what it's supposed to do. There's a lot of grand spaces, and that's fine. Um, but I, I think you need to put that aside. And since this is preliminary, this is the time to do it, you know, to sort of come up with another scheme that, that addresses the site conditions because it's a beautiful lot. It's a really a wonderful place that I think will will deserves a you know a really good good project that's sort of uh, that's generated by the site uh, and, and not just by the program uh, uh, given to you by the, the owner um, so I, I think you know I'm kind of addressing general terms but uh, hopefully that that will be enough to sort of give you some direction um, <clears throat> I would like to also comment on the style of the house uh, I know you talked quite a bit about, you know, the sort of Mediterranean, Italianate uh, elements on the house and, and all that, and I think that's all fine. But to me, this style that you picked seems very urban. It doesn't seem uh, appropriate for the site. I think the site for me is, you know, if you, when you, especially when, when you walk up this drive when you, and land at the very top, it's destination. It's a really great place to be. And uh, you have all these really wonderful views. And when you're up there, there's a sense of, um, um, I don't want to say isolation is the wrong word, because isolation has kind of a negative connotation. But it's, it's a sort of serene place. That you're up there, you're sort of at the top of this hill, and nobody can really touch you. And it, it's sort of this, um, uh, what's a good word? It's a, it's a retreat. It's like a retreat. It's a... And so you have to come up with a style of architecture that kind of, in, uh, you know, implies that. You know, this is a, a picturesque uh, approach I think you need to look at. And a picturesque approach requires a more naturalistic uh, viewpoint of, how to, of the elements. It's not about cornices and keystones and arches. That's not what this house is about. This house is about how you get there. When you're there, what do you really see? What kind of views do you have? How it relates to the neighbors? What kind of entry sequence do you have that it takes in all of these site conditions that are already there? That's why I suggest that maybe a series of courtyards might be nice. You may have to sacrifice some interior square footage, but you put that square footage on outdoor space that actually becomes part of the indoor space. When you open a door or slide indoors, that outdoor space becomes part of the room, and, it, and you engage in the building with the site. So this is one of those outstanding sites where you really have to think about all these things and not just try to meet the program of the, of the owner, because I think this meets the program. I'm sure this would be, you know, if you take the site away and you deal with the site sort of uh, in a vacuum, I'm sure when you come inside the front door and you're in this building, it's going to be wonderful. I mean, you're going to have all these great spaces, and it's going to be very comfortable. But... Uh, I think we need to term things in, think in terms of uh, the larger picture, which is really the site, the neighbors, uh, the views, and just what happens when you get up there and the arrival, the sense of arrival. So I would just really shy away from this classical style and pick a style that, that, that even more, you know, some kind of a contemporary approach could actually work here, but I'm not saying modern or modernist. I'm just saying uh, don't focus so much on the motifs, because there's a lot of motifs on this house. When you look at the elevation, there's Italianate uh, motifs, you know, from, you know, Renaissance period. There's little cornices and uh, columns and, and uh, you know, keystones and, and, you know, window sills and things like that. These motifs, I think, are distracting. I don't think it's about that. 
uh, I think you should look at should look at great architecture. You know, you should look at you know. Uh, even if you go some of the northern California architects, uh, uh, try to find out what it's like to build in a landscape like this, um, and really draw from the best examples. Um, I think you know, I, I, nice wood. I, I you know, think of the 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 fire. Uh, is it the fire? Some no, the Robert Mondavi um, winery up in Napa Valley. When right. you see that, you go, "Whoa!" That's you know, it's a similar. It's different, but you look at that, and that that architecture is like this. But what it does to that site, I also think of, uh, um, yes, I also that motor, that Tony, uh, the race car driver has a winery up there. What's his name? Um, the Italian guy up in Napa. The Italian guy, his son drives. No, no, it's up higher. Anyway, I saw his piece of property, and, you, and it's like, goodness, look at this, and it, how it works with this. <laughs> no, anyway. But it's an estate. And ready. Mike, uh, Michael and Ruddy. Ruddy. No, the dad. Oh, the dad Mario. has a winery up there. It's just, Mario. It's, it's Ital Mario. It's Italian-esque, but it works with elevations and history, and this property has that. But, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that, because that, that type of Italian yeah. name yeah. is <laughs> different. It's more like a sort of a rustic, more country. This is, the style of this house is very um, uh, detailed with, with, with such details that are so, they don't remind me of sort of rusticity. They're, they're too, uh, that's why I call that urban. It's sort of the kind of thing you see in, a, in an urban context. Uh, I, if you want to go with an Italian native, some kind of, I would go totally rustic and, and you know, perhaps deep recessed windows and, you know, a plaster that's, uh, that's handmade and things like that. Not too much on the corners and the arches. Not what this house is about, I don't think. Um, but I hope all this information is useful and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the next stage. Um, so I think I've said enough. Thank you, Mr. Just one little comment. I have no doubt that we're going to get a great design up here. They're very good. Um, but I just wanted to point something out that goes back to, were you thinking about where you were placing the site? And my only purpose is to give constructive criticism. Again, no doubt that we're going to have a great project. But when you look on the floor plan, we have two doors that come out right there. We have two doors that come out right there from this den. Doors are coming out into the driveway and into this driveway. It's stuff like that that it's about the site. And and it, again, no doubt that you're going to do a great job on this, but it doesn't make sense. Excuse me. So, anyway, I wanted to make that comment because it, it's so evident that this, the, the footprint, the size is, mm -hmm. is not about the site. Thank you for all your comments. Um, I'll keep it brief. Um, I think a lot of important things have been said about the project and how it's oriented and the massing, the siting, the, uh, the treatment of the edges of, the, of that plateau up there. Um, when I was re reviewing the documents, what, one thing that became glaring to me was I felt like the wrong things were driving where the house was located. And so that's a siting issue of it seemed like the house was sort of, I guess, designed in a vacuum outside of the, the site. And then on the placement of it, it became more apparent that it was that the, having a large backyard became a very driving issue. And so by putting the, the building and bisecting sort of the large pad that's there, it's creating this front and back formal part of the, the site that the site doesn't really have. It, the site is very, you know, 360. It's all over. And it's by putting this thing in a, at that particular angle, it's creating, you know, the small little front yard area that's formal, but not really because it's not really on an axis of anything. Um, the first thing you see as you approach is the garage, um, you know, and then you have this huge sort of backyard that spans the view. But the site is sacrificed because of the house and how it's sitting on there. And so uh, regarding the detailing of the, the buildings, um, I think the staff, I think staff has, has covered it by saying be true. Whatever you choose, be true to and go all, go all out on it. And so uh, we're not telling you what style you need to go, you know, don't marry yourself to one or the other, but just pick one and go with it, and I think we would be more respectable of that than we would, you know, trying to sort of piecemealing things, and just because the, the piece that you're putting on is true doesn't make the building itself true, just because you're applying it on there, and so um, I think a lot of good things have been said, I think, you know, they've probably been very busy typing up everything that they've said, so um, we are glad that it is in the preliminary stage, and so 
we will be able to see more uh, further development on it, uh, and hopefully um, you will take a lot of the comments to heart and, and implement them on the on the project. Uh, but I would also suggest that you would also meet with the, the neighborhood one more time. Um, and now that they're aware of it, hopefully you'll get a chance to say uh, what you said up here and then maybe reiterate it to, to the designer or to the architect as we go forward. Um, I think we're clear on what we want. I was going to encourage that, that uh, obviously Chevy Chase Homeowners Association has some say or some weight, but it's they're not here. The neighbors are here. Yeah. They're the ones that you need to be interfacing. And they had a lot of good things to say, and yes. I think we should, right. should be incorporated. So, so I'll move to uh, return for redesign. Is that where, where, what where should we be? Return for final, I guess? or how No. I, what's the... You would either be allowing it to proceed to final, or requiring them to return for a preliminary review once more. Okay. A return for preliminary with uh, the conditions as. Uh, preliminary. And uh, do you want to read back some of the notes or what? Uh, I didn't <laughs> take enough notes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to hear, but. <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, with the issue that the site planning be reconsidered and uh, placement um, and style. If, uh, if it pleases the board, we could do one of two things. Um, we can, because a lot has been said, um, much of it uh, we think uh, is in agreement, is already written in the staff report. Uh, the additional comments that we did hear uh, was uh, to have, was a little bit more giving a direction on a particular style and some specific suggestions that might be helpful. So um, we, we would typically, um, we, we don't have preliminary um, review very often, so we're, we would still figure out uh, how to make the record of decision. What we could do is include the comments in the report and also include uh, the additional comments that the designer should consider a more rustic style to be rather than the classical style that doesn't seem to relate to its setting, something that would be more comfortable in the site setting and with the neighborhood. So that was the additional comment that was something that we didn't touch on uh, since staff uh, typically takes the position that as long as your style is not really conflicting with anything, um, if it's well done, it it um, it should be allowed to proceed. But we we would not disagree with any of the comments that were made. So, uh, or we could simply refer the applicant to the, to the tapes and the comments that you made and to the staff report, and not include anything in the record of decision. So we we will we will probably do one of those things. If you would like for us to include comments in the record of decision, then we want to, because you'd like it to become, come back for preliminary review, um, then we would probably like to be very specific about those comments, because you're, you're asking something that's unusual, since the preliminary review is not required, and we typically um, don't encourage applicants to do a preliminary review, um, we would have to likely check to see, and maybe when we um, when we're uh, discussing the next project, if we're discussing the next project, we can uh, double check if the DRB can actually require it to come back for a preliminary review. We're, we're not exactly certain about that point. I mean, I, could I ask a question? I mean, if we don't do that, and we say that it's, it's okay to move forward to final, we're basically acknowledging that the site planning is okay, and we're saying that the right. site planning is not okay. No, um, because preliminary it is not preliminary is not required um, by ordinance. They're actually allowed to proceed to final. Uh, if you would like for us to include comments in the record of decision. Uh, we could, we'd like to probably make sure that we have a clarity on those comments. Let's include comments. 
I mean, that's what I would suggest. And based on what you're saying here, if they don't need to come back for a preliminary and, and their next step would be final, uh, then let's make detailed notes that we've had here and make that part of our of the record. Okay. You guys could then, Well, yeah. then we, we have to say proceed to to final with the I comments. I think even if we tell them to come back as a preliminary, they can come back as a right. final. Right. Right. It's up to them. So. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Actually. The, the other thing that um, you might want to be aware of, as rather mentioned, is that there's, um, there's a process that happens before they would come back for final review. There's the CUP that's required in front of the zoning administrator. Prior to that, there would be environmental review required. So it, it might not come back to you for, for some time. Doesn't that, what they take to that, I mean, I guess it would seem logical that you'd want to have a closer to what you're going to present as final, as opposed to taking the design here that we seem to pick apart? I, I, I think that's why they uh, asked right. to to move forward with the preliminary review, uh, so that they would have a better degree of certainty. Uh, but that's just speculation right. on my part. Exactly. I think we're leaning towards recommending, at least, uh, to come back as a... Yeah, I mean, I... But as a preliminary game, but with the comments that we've made and right. put that as as the items, um, do we want to? I guess did you take most of the notes, or did you? I I uh, tried my best to take. Here are some okay. thoughts that came to mind as we were talking. About just some thoughts: reduce the square footage of the residence if that it improve the site design placement. Mm -hmm. um, if I look at the footprint, as Mr. Liana was saying, it's more of a rectangle, a boxed rectangle. Imagine. Um, a design that has less of a box rectangle but has more two or three axes which are driving it. You know, you can see that the site wants to travel in this axis, another portion of it in this axis, and another portion of it in this axis. If that was achieved, you can imagine the outdoor backyard going this way. Then you have a small private court here. You just, the site is wanting it to not be a rectangle. It's wanting it to look at the access, then come across this way, then come across this way, and then start building your forms. Again, that harkens back to what I've seen up in Napa of some of those new contemporary wineries that are spectacular, and they make you feel like you're back in the Tuscan neighborhood, or, you know, back in Italy, which I'll go one day, but um, I, I just it just sees that. Um, um, and this, you may find that your footprint stays at 6,700. If you push things out and use the site and use multiple axes, you may get 6,700 square feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if I may, I'm, I'm going through the conditions that were included in the report. There are 15 of them, and um, I'm wondering if, because the um, couple that you just mentioned, the building footprint and form should complement the shape of the building pad and orient in the same direction. Yeah. It, it, if um, it, it may be um, helpful uh, if we could use some of these conditions as a point of departure. Um, because uh, this is preliminary and we've heard a lot a lot of ideas, um, and if there's something big that we missed or specific that you'd like to include, uh, or something you don't agree with that you want to strike, um, what the volume should be simplified. That means, what? I mean, I, I kind of could support what Mr. Uh, Insua was saying that you know reduce some um, of the force. Yeah, Square I guess is that where we're going with uh, that the, term? the one the we've heard a couple of different things on the square footage. Um, I think from some of the board members, we've heard that the square footage could be rearranged on the site and potentially not have to be reduced. Um, and so I'm seeing nods. So if if the board says reduce the square footage, that's that's pretty cut and dry. But if if it's about rearranging the square footage on the site to fit the site better, um, we could we could say it that I, way. That, I would prefer that. I mean, I, I you know the size of the lot they can build that's pretty big, but they're not fitting the site, and so yeah. So oh, um, your statement would yeah. work for me. Okay, your question regarding. Um, Number nine. Condition number nine, um, that uh, is similar or could be read together with condition number eight. Um, 
introduce more forms in the building aside from super articulated walls. The way the way the report reads and the way staff read the building, as it were, is that it's a fairly simple form, and the walls go undulate and go in and out to provide the articulation. So what staff was recommending is that the form should be more more well considered on the site and that it shouldn't just get its architecture from the perimeter walls. If we haven't said it clearly in here, um, or nine, eight and nine should be put together, uh, I, yeah, um, I think that the applicant would be well served if they looked at the videotape or the DVD, whatever is now, and listened to those things. I'm going to I'm going to say something now, and again, it's not my design, but boy, this kind of design, you want to have a grand outdoor area, which you've got. But what about the master bedroom? Imagine if the master bedroom had its own private little balcony, its own private little patio. When you think about the changing in the orientation, like you know, just think about. Forget the rectangle. Go and okay. So you got your pri you got your big public area here. With, but right off here, off the master bedroom, imagine a balcony that sets off of that. It's for the private master bedroom. Wow, that's exciting. Here are tapes. It just, there's a lot of exciting things that can be done on the site. But when you make it one rectangle, and you got the front yard in the in the backyard huge, and all the things put in there, where's the mystery? Where's the interest of all those great little places that this kind of architecture? Has you know you look at some of the great homes by some of the turn of the century architects in Pasadena, Los Angeles, and they got these little you know, got the big courtyard, but then the master bedroom has a wonderful place with the people, maybe an outdoor you know pit or something. That's what this kind of architecture has. I think that we could, for me, we could go on and on. Listen to the tape, get some images, and and then. Go. Oh, I think you have a great. Actually, I think that's a that's a good suggestion. Is I mean. Yeah, in the notes that, that you took, problem. were there any <laughs> items that we could, I guess, elaborate well, on? Well, um, a couple of times we did hear some agreement with the staff comments, and there were 15 of them, so we don't necessarily need to go through them. Um, but perhaps when we talk about the building form, uh, which is um, 7, 8, and 9, we could also include something, I'm going to translate what I've heard you say, uh, which is consider uh, breaking up the building into a number of forms surrounding a series of courtyards, perhaps. Uh, that's, that's sort of how I would translate a lot of the really great ideas into just a simple sentence we can include, and I'm seeing some some nods. So. So maybe we can include that piece and help to explain. Because what we do is we, we listen to the tapes. We advise the applicant to do so. But we do rely on the, the written as well as we're, as we're meeting. So that's why we, we try to have these conversations so that in, in writing we can have that level of clarity. Um, I think somewhere in here um, we've mentioned to look at architectural precedents, but if it's not, that's a that's a um, comment that we heard a couple of times. If it's not included, I think in the in the 15 items, we could also go ahead and include. We need to put that in. That's more of a suggestion of how to proceed with the, with. Coming up as a consideration, name. that's you know. How do we even prove that that they're going to actually look at all this? Thing? Okay, so would you like us to include that as a consideration? I don't think we need to. I think that's something okay. that they can listen to on the tape and just. You know. Okay, so with uh, essentially the two pieces that we're adding to regarding the style consideration of a style that would fit in better with the neighborhood and with the setting, uh, rearrange the volumes on the site to better fit the the site shape and contours and location and to rearrange the perhaps consider rearranging the project into a series of smaller volumes perhaps around a series of courtyards 
That's a good suggestion. So if we included those with the laundry list that we already have, would that help that to convey me. most of your concerns? I think I would also um, look at the comments, number nine. That could be expanded upon. Uh, the volume should be simplified. I would just say that, but then put a, a hyphen and say what that really means is that uh, what Mr. Inswa said, you know, that it's a rectangular building. Maybe it should not be a monolithic sort of rectangular shape. Maybe that sort of expands upon what you just said. Also, the idea of breaking the building up. You could introduce a sentence there where you could say exactly that, that the monolithic nature of the building uh, uh, doesn't seem appropriate and perhaps come up with a less, uh, more of a broken down kind of volumetric approach. And that could imply courtyards, it could imply one big courtyard where everything kind of comes to. Uh, there's many ways to do this. Um, I would also not get so specific on the details because uh, number 13 and 14, if you say coins and windows surrounds, it already implies that we're accepting this particular right. approach, of a stylistic approach, and we're saying explore other approach. I would strike 13 and 14 and maybe substitute that with another number that says investigate more picturesque uh, styles, more rustic styles, more organic. poetic, organic. organic, yes, thank you. Uh, so I would just sort of combine 13 and 14 into a sentence like that. Um, mm. Uh, what else? Number eight, I think I had a comment. There's more forms in building. Um, that one there is kind of similar to what we're saying. You know, to me, that means come up with a building that's more picturesque. You know, the edges of the property perhaps not being such straight walls, but maybe could have ins and outs. You could have a little courtyards, little patios to bring the building in so then people want to look from, from the adjacent property. You're looking at sort of a picturesque view rather than a, you know, a highly articulated wall, but it's just a wall. Um, so I would say number eight should be expanded upon 13 and 14 combined into one comment that talks about um, style in general. And I think that's fine. I think you've captured the essence of what we're saying. And like Mr. Inswith said, I think the applicant should look at the tape uh, and and uh, revisit some of these things through, through the tape. Does staff have enough to cover, I guess, most of the comments and... Write a small book. To write a small book. <laughs> um, so I think those are our options. I think we should make a motion. Are the red notes from you, Mr. Aliano? Yes, the red notes are from us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, there's not a lot of choice here. I think possibly Correct. the last one might be a good one, cause just because if we do continue. the second one, it... Continue. it continue. Because the yeah, one that's, that would be the only one I would choose out of, the, uh, yeah. out of that. Actually, and just to clarify, according to the procedures of the Design Review Board, the possible board decisions include allowing the project to proceed as is to final review, allowing the preliminary design to proceed with comments in this case. It would not be conditions, but again, your comments would be taken into consideration by the applicant knowing that when he returns for final review, these are the items that you will be looking at primarily. Or last would be to continue the matter, but that is typically only done when you need additional information to make it. Right. Oh, I see. I would, I would think it could continue with uh, comments. This with would be to, in this case, and as I just mentioned, the continuation would be for additional information. No, it wouldn't be right, to right. continue the case to be reheard, and, allowing okay, the right. applicant to make all of these changes to the project. Okay. Right. No, I wasn't suggesting so to continue. Be then so to let me just move it and let's see what happens. Because <laughs> we have three choices. The first, yeah, so she's read them off. And can we deny that there's no denial? There's no the denial. Project. Yeah, how can we? Right. Because two are agreeing with the design and one is continuing and we can't do continuing then. But there is one in there that says continue with preliminary design with comments, which means that you're still in a preliminary stage. But right. we just but have the first a lot part of, of it says that you agree with the main layout of the... Right. Is appropriate. The preliminary design is appropriate, is appropriate to proceed. That's why I put it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, well, that's what I would... Uh, I'm sorry? I, 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 the only one I can support is continue uh, to... Uh, I, I can't support preliminary design is appropriate to proceed to the final review process with comments. I guess I, I'm, I'm having trouble yeah, with that. 
If I, if I may jump in, um, yes, sir. We probably should go by the or, by the uh, ordinance the council adopted as part probably of the zoning good. code instead of the um, the procedures that the board follows. Uh, when the city council revamped the design review uh, recently, um, it actually uh, th there's nothing that prevents anyone from applying for final design review. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Neither staff nor the board can can prevent that. Preliminary gotcha. review is just a way to, um, you know, get some feedback with perhaps um, plans that are not as fully developed as you might have for final design review. Okay. Um, I think the board can certainly send extremely clear message and strong message to your choosing. All right. So here's what I'll do. I cannot support the the design as submitted, I will move preliminary design to proceed to final review process with comments. I can second that because we're not saying that preliminary design is appropriate. We just right. I can't say that. I agree with that. Okay. Okay. Um, I second that. So the motion was to uh, to have the project preliminary uh, design can proceed to. Uh, final with no I don't think that's what he was saying mm -hmm. are you saying that well I, you, you, we're stuck here because yeah, that's, that's the wording but I, I cannot support the project as as submitted but I will we move can't. it to a final design you know, with well, comments in this case you're just right you have made your comments based on what has been submitted right and you have given clear direction in those comments for the applicant to proceed with with changes and that he right. can then go ahead and apply for it. And again, yeah, as, and I'll support that. As, yeah. The as, comments could be that the design as submitted would not be would correct. Not, well, it, it yeah, could come back to us. Approval. Right. It, it could come back as final. I mean, they, they have that option because that's, and correct. but they'll know now that there won't be a support of that from this, this board. Exactly. Right. Okay, so uh, again, uh, the, the motion was to allow the project. Preliminary design to proceed to final with the board's condition as well as uh, the condition stated in the staff report. Correct. That'll work. Yeah. Second. So, uh, second by Mr. Eliano. Mm -hmm. Eliano. Roll call, Mr. Eliano. Yes. Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. Insua. Yes. And Chairman Yu. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Up. My turn. <laughs> what Thank took you, you for so being long. so patient. <laughs> I know you um, didn't have any choice, but <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, as uh, my property is within 500 feet this of uh, the Virginia Avenue, and so I'm going to have to recuse myself from consideration. And I actually wanted to see the. Do we have a radius map of the Virginia property? So I guess it's on the board. It's on the board. I may also. <laughs> oh, I can't. I thought you were farther ahead than I just told him. I'm above Kenneth. No, 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 no. You're fine. Okay. You're, you're fine. Okay. You're, you're, he has no problem. No. You're, right there next to Hoover. Oh, Hoover. Yeah. I already told him he could stay. <laughs> you want to do that to her? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, can I suggest a five-minute recess, maybe, so we can go to the restaurant? I gotta be home, honey. You know what? Are we good? Are we, are, there's, oh, yeah, I'm out of it. Okay. <laughs> you like a recess? Yes, we'll please. go ahead and take a recess, then. We'll take a recess. Yeah. Quick. Quick. Quick.
Let's go over the proposal. Over on. She wants yeah, to talk about it. Briefly. I'll get you the other one. There. Shame. She said she wants to talk about it briefly. Years. Only if we were opening it. You really want to do that, Milka? So you don't have to. No. Okay. Yeah, I have the same. Yeah. Okay, we're on. Those are fine. That the big one. I like it. We're on. We're on. We're on. Let's go. Oh. Okay, I'll get you the 2009 then. Okay. I'll get you 2009. 2009. Is that one? Welcome back <laughs> from the break. Um, I think we finally have uh, enough people to be able to go back to the consent calendar regarding um, 1 PDR 2009 020 uh, A 1317 Virginia Avenue. And um, since it is on the consent calendar, uh, we can open it up if. It's requested by one of the the board members. If not, uh, we can proceed to to approving it as applied. This one, In the past, I think they've usually allowed staff to do the presentation so that the community can benefit from the. Okay. Presentation. Um, it's it's up to you. Uh, if there is an, we we very rarely use the consent calendar. Um, if there is a project that uh, staff feels strongly that we have no comments on it's a usually we only do it for a fairly minimal renovation uh, so we we only we very rarely put things on consent but when we do is because the scope of work is somewhat limited uh, etc uh, so um, it's only if you have questions and would like to talk about it then you would hear a staff report and and so on do we have any objection to um, was I present at this one? I don't think I... We've never heard this oh, case this before. It's the first time yeah. submittal. Oh, well, why would it be? Hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm comfortable with it. I think it's well executed and in proper portions. I think I'm comfortable with it big time, as they say. But can I, how does it become on consent? I mean, and again, that, that's a, that's a v vehicle that we sometimes use. Uh, speed things up. And if... It, it's a signal to the board that you know we've worked with the applicant and it seems okay to us uh, and also we think that we predict it's part of the magic ball that we have we will predict that the the board will have no question about it and so we will sometimes not often uh, and maybe we haven't done it with board one uh, but we have we have done it's like it. Our second or third one. Yeah, second. before, and it and it's similar to what happens at city council. If you've reviewed the project, you don't have any questions or concerns about the project. You could just make a motion to approve it. So this is one of those projects where you reviewed it thoroughly and you feel very comfortable with, and that's why you put it. Okay. That's right. If All right. If the address looks familiar, is simply also because it's been on the consent calendar. Previously, and due that's normally what I remember being due, a consent item. Due to, yeah. due to posting issues regarding the you know posting on the property, it had to be renoticed and then continued. But sometimes we we put items on consent because we want to see it again, Correct. but we don't want to open up the case. Correct. So it this is, is a different kind this of. This is a completely different situation. Okay. Would you be opposed to approving it as is? I don't have any issues with it. Okay. I don't either. I think we can. Move on. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve as a consent. <laughs> okay, and that was a uh, second. <laughs> I'll second it. With no, well, actually, just the comments or the suggested conditions that we have the staff in the staff report. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be one through four, and actually, they've already addressed comment number one. So, okay, that was a motion by board member and Sue, and a second by board member Aliano. It would be approved with conditions, and obviously, the four that we just talked about. Um, board member and Sue? Yes. Board member Aliano? Yes. Chairperson Yu? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being so patient. <laughs> thank you. He's done. And, um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, for you. <laughs> I hope you get paid hourly. <laughs> if only they tweet the line on that drawing, we would have had no problem. Oh, Board Member Ellis, you're back. I am back. Oh, thank you. I missed it all. What happened? Anything exciting? We bashed it. <laughs> um, I'll move acceptance of the minutes of approval of April 16, 2009. Ah, thank you, Mr. Ellis. And then do I have and a that second? That was the only other person who was here. Correct. So. And board member, you was the only other person here. So I second it? Or? You may. I second. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 
passes 2-0. And there are no other staff announcements. I move we adjourn. We adjourn at 7.50. <laughs> 7. Thank you very much. I looked at you like you had